So let's uh, get started. Uh, thank you all for joining. And this is a true global meet. There are people from all over the world. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, uh, depending on where you are. So let us start with a prayer. So please close your eyes. with deep love for God and gurus. Let us offer this prayer. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karva Vahai Tejasvi Navadi Tamastu Ma Vidvisha Vahai Om Shanti 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 hi. Okay, so let us get started. I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone see it? Is that good? Okay, so today's topic is how to be a yogi. Many of us, uh, most of us are already yogi. We are practicing yoga and we are on the way, a uh, different level in the journey, but nonetheless, we are all yogis. So how to be a yogi, uh, I would be uh, talking about, we'll be discussing what is yoga, the branches of yoga and how Kriya Yoga relates to the different branches of yoga. What is yoga? Uh, as uh, uh, Guruji uh, in his uh, video talked about, uh, there are 32 meanings of yoga in Sanskrit. So many different meanings, but the essence would be union of individual soul with God. And that is really the goal of yoga to achieve union with God, self-realization, God-realization through the practice of yoga. First of all, I want to emphasize here is that yoga is a science, right? It's not, it is real science because it's derived from observations and experimentations, just like science. It's natural, natural laws in science are uh, found through observations, experiments, and then they are documented. Same way in ancient India, many sages and saints, they practice and then they observed and then they experimented and then they refined. And from that, they spiritually grew uh, very high. And what they did was they documented that. They put it down in books. They also talked to the disciples. They also talked in public. So it was deployed that way. And, uh, uh, but it is a true science. It, it is a science where if you do one plus one, it is always two, so is yoga, okay? If you practice yoga uh, in the correct manner, uh, your guaranteed results. Who is a yogi? So as I was saying, everyone is a yogi who is practicing yoga. Uh, and uh, there are three types of yogis. Okay, one class would be that they are born yogis. They're born yogis because from previous lives, they have advanced to a level where this life they are picking up from there. So while the, they're young, they're in their childhood, they're already thinking in that way. They are um, not as interested in the sensual pleasures or the uh, senses. They are focused more internally. And uh, as they grow, they are, uh, their practice will uh, quicken and quickly advance. They may find a guru and with that it advances even further. So they are already on the path and all set and making a great progress. The second set of yogis, are uh, more like uh, 
uh, they are uh, somewhere in between. So they are partially awakened, and uh, when uh, they they still have uh, other distractions and they are trying out things, they are experimenting, they are uh, trying out different ways of doing things, they are not committed to uh, the advancement uh, in the beginning. However, they are still on the journey and uh, they will definitely take a lot longer and their advancement is not as much as the first type of yogis, but they are on the way and they would find a uh, guru uh, or a teacher and then they advance further uh, they may have wasted or may waste a lot of time along the journey uh, as they are experimenting and finding out things, but uh, nonetheless, they'll make progress. The third set of yogis are really, uh, they are more uh, uh, unawakened soul. So unawakened soul is, uh, uh, they are... Uh, Maybe first time in this life, they are trying uh, yoga. For even from previous life, they have not tried yoga. And now they are getting into it. They are new. They are not awakened yet. Nonetheless, they are, uh, they are starting the journey. They will struggle a lot. They may not understand the training. They may not internalize it for a while. Uh, but uh, they could also meet a teacher and uh, make some progress. Uh, for them, Hatha Yoga uh, may be a starting point with that they physically they become strong and they prepare themselves to then uh, further advance into Raja Yoga. So those are the uh, three classes of yogis and the rewards, rewards of yoga. Uh, as I was saying, the, the, the objective here, the goal, uh, it's not even an objective, it's like a goal of yoga is the uh, union of the soul with God. So the rewards, if you look at, uh, uh, but that's an ultimate spiritual goal. But in between, let's say on physical plane, it gives you uh, better health. It makes you stronger physically, uh, less diseases. Uh, and uh, it, uh, you know, gives you strength to then practice uh, meditation. So physical plane, there are a lot of rewards. If you look at the mental plane, uh, there are a lot of rewards. Mind becomes peaceful less stress, less anxiety, less negativity, and mind is uh, uh, preparing for further advancement. On the spiritual plane, uh, the, uh, the, the rewards are uh, God realization, self-realization, reaching the ultimate goal. Uh, uh, so that in itself is a, a big one. Also, if you look at uh, peace, it's everlasting peace in that case when you are spiritually advanced. So everlasting peace, love, joy. Life is a lot of joy and love. Okay. So that's uh, 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 what's yoga. The branches of yoga, there are many, many branches of yoga. Hatha yoga, Raja yoga, Bhakti yoga, Karma yoga, Jnana yoga. Uh, these are the some uh, big ones I've listed, but then there is uh, La yoga. Guruji talks about it. Uh, in uh, his book Kriya Yoga, there is uh, uh, many other yogas, but these are the main ones. Kriya Yoga is the essence of all yogas, and Guru Dev says that in the Kriya Yoga book is the essence of all yogas. Kriya Yoga has taken all the best practices, all the uh, uh, all the the techniques and the things which would help us. Uh, make progress in a speedy manner. So, uh, Kriya Yoga is an essence of all these uh, yogas and uh, same way Kriya Yoga is an essence of all religions. So, uh, I will be today uh, more discussing the Hatha Yoga and Raja Yoga. Uh, maybe we might get a little bit to Bhakti Yoga, but the others because of lack of time, we will not get to. So that could be maybe another time. Uh, but uh, at least uh, let's talk about the first two. I also wanted to talk about, when I talk about the books, of course, uh, this book, Kriya Yoga uh, by Gurudev, uh, it is uh, for me, it's like a Bible. 
it's uh, it is what i go to for kriya yoga it has so much information so many um, subtle things which i may not get it when i read it and then next time i read more is revealed to me so i really really like that book also some of the information has come from swami vivekananda's uh, 10 volumes of complete works of vivekananda and there is this small little book which is how to be a yogi so <clears throat> and how to be a yogi swami abedananda who has authored that book so uh, those are some of the books uh, i recommend branches of hatha yoga so first one is uh, i'm sorry branches of yoga first one is hatha yoga so i want to talk about hatha yoga in in, uh, in the us it's very very popular you will see yoga studios all over and a lot of people are practicing uh, hatha yoga so what is hatha yoga there are two syllables ha and tha which is the union of sun and moon union union of prana and aparna vayus uh, so that's hatha yoga it's a control of body okay so hatha yoga is concentration on the body itself Uh, and uh, by techniques like pranayama asanas other techniques uh, like uh, bandhas uh, different postures mudras all of these things to to make the body strong and flexible right so uh, the goal here is to live long and a perfect health and uh, preserve youth so there are people in india uh, we have heard of uh, they have lived 150 years and even uh, they are in 70s but still looking very young and youthful so uh, a hatha yogi could have that kind of control they would have control over their food their uh, uh, drinking their uh, uh, water uh, intake uh, they even uh, sometimes have very sharp uh, uh, vision a small needle on the floor they can spot it uh, with their sharp vision so physically there are a lot of benefits however it may not lead much to spiritual growth so uh, hatha yoga may prepare your body make it stronger to do further advancement by following other yogas but by itself it does not give you a lot of spiritual growth and uh, in uh, uh, kriya yoga uh, maha mudra is a great example of some of the hatha yoga practices physical but also tied in with mental and as we know there are many many benefits of maha mudra so what uh, kriya yoga has uh, is uh, adopted all the uh, all the real good benefits of other yogas and uh, integrated into kriya yoga so maha mudra is a great uh, example of hatha yoga practice integrated in kriya yoga the second branch of yoga is raj yoga so raj is king so raj yoga it's a royal path royal path of yoga okay uh, the uh, by following this path uh, you are purifying and gaining mastery over mind so hatha yoga is more focused on on physical plane whereas raj yoga is more focused on the mind so the control of the mind the elevation of the mind okay with that you are going within uh, you are concentrating you are meditating and then ultimately the objective of god realization that's the goal or self realization so that's what raj yoga does in ancient times uh raj yoga was developed the same way uh, through experiments and through learning kriya yoga is uh, taken uh, is an essence of raj yoga and other yogas but many best uh, practices from raj yoga are in our kriya yoga and uh, patanjali's uh, book uh, patanjali's writings Uh, he has uh, shown eight fold path which is called astang yoga 
which is the eight uh, yoga of eight limbs. So that provides a really good methodology of Raja Yoga. So we'll go into the details of all eight limbs. So in ancient times, uh, the, the, the sages practiced eightfold path. They religiously practiced all these eight steps to then achieve the ultimate goal of self-realization. So the eightfold path is Yama, which is self-control, Niyama, which is observances, Asana, physical postures, Pranayama, control of Prana, Pratyahar is withdrawal of senses, Dharna is meditation, and the ultimate goal is Samadhi, the super conscious state. Okay, so let's talk about these eight steps. The first one is Yama, which is self control. Right, so these are like the basics uh, to get started on the path of meditation and uh, yoga is you uh, de one develops uh, the control uh, with morality, uh, continence in thoughts, words, and deed, not stealing, truthfulness, non injury, non killing, and ahimsa. So, ahimsa is, is a good one where never cause pain by thought, word, and deed to any living being. So it's not just that deed uh, causes injury, it also the thoughts and words. Uh, words can also be very powerful in hurting someone uh, and their feelings and thoughts. Of course, uh, thoughts are internal to you, but there are some vibrations and uh, it does have a negative impact uh, going out. So. And even for your own benefit, uh, having uh, caused pain by thought it is not good for you as well as others. So, ahimsa is also part of yama. So, yesterday I saw this uh, uh, from uh, Gurudev uh, in the nectar drops, which uh, every day uh, that's a beautiful way of waking up and uh, reading this and highly recommend to everyone who is not but i think most of us are doing it is this is the one where gurudev says careless use of words brings suffering in our life words are mantras or prayers to god you are speaking in the presence of god speak sweetly with love so no matter where you are god is uh, there uh, god is everywhere and as if you are speaking to the God, you should, you should be careful the words you use. The second one is Niyama. So Niyama is uh, observances, which is purity, purity of external and internal purity. So talks, external purity would be um, uh, keeping the body clean, uh, bathing with uh, water or other uh, earthly compounds, uh, keeping, uh, so that's an internal, uh, the internal would be cleaning the mind, um, uh, purifying the mind uh, internally, uh, following yamas and niyamas and being more uh, calm and peaceful. Uh, so the internal purity also uh, is important. Contentment, austerity, charity, those are also you want to follow as niyamas. Study of scriptures, uh, study of your own religion and the scriptures you follow uh, would also advance, uh, give you advancements. Surrender to God uh, as a part of niyama. So yamas and niyamas together, uh, are the first and the second step, that's just the beginning of the practice. If you don't have these two things as a foundation, then it's hard to make progress on the path of yoga further. So you want to uh, make sure these are followed. Uh, many or some religious people, uh, they follow the yamas and niyamas and at the end of it, they, they think that is spirituality and then they think that's a 
they 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 feel good they uh, feel peaceful uh, they uh, build some good karmas doing yamas and niyamas but that's uh, that's the beginning on the way to self realization so one should advance from this into further planes the third is asana correct physical postures uh, a series of exercises uh, physical and mental uh, but especially how you sit your posture while you are sitting uh, is very important and it prepares us for further advancement in in yoga so uh, the, for example the sitting posture where your uh, your chest your uh, neck and your head they are all in a straight line and your spinal column is erect and uh, as if the the ribs are carrying the weight of your body that posture uh, which sitting straight uh, gives uh, is a good starting point for for the advancement so body feels uh, free from restlessness by practicing asanas and body feels uh, free from restlessness which is important for further advancement uh, for many years you uh, you can sit for many hours without pain which is critical for further meditation the erect spine uh, enables consciousness from lower to higher centers if you are sitting not erect and your spinal column is not erect uh, the, the free flow of prana is blocked and uh, uh, it does not uh, allow you to go to higher consciousness so asanas are important the next is pranayama so prana is the life force and uh, ayama means control so the control of the life force is pranayama and uh, it controls uh, life force mind heart beats pulse all of that one can control with pranayama three uh, steps in pranayama which are critical one is inhaling and then holding and then exhaling right so by practicing pranayama our objective is to open the shushumna the center air passage in the spinal column and uh, in uh, uh, generally people uh, uh, this without who are not practicing yoga would have this shushumna closed so the air passage is closed and the free flow of uh, latent energy kundalini energy uh, uh, does not uh, uh, rise above into the higher centers because the passage is blocked and uh, through pranayama you could uh, open up the shushumna for the uh, and allow free flow of prana so uh, one of the key objective in in yoga is to open this shushumna and uh, uh, kriya yoga we have kriya pranayam which is a very powerful way uh, we are doing pranayama and uh, uh, helps us open the passage uh, doing kriya pranayama is uh, also it energizes oxygenates us and it's a beautiful technique doing it more in our practice uh, kriya pranayama would uh, provide uh, more energy and advance faster so uh, guruji recommends 7 uh, up to 7 and uh, time permitting more you do more it will be helpful pratyahar which is the withdrawal of senses there are five senses sight smell sound taste and touch and these five senses come from five sense organs sight comes from eyes smell comes from nose sound comes from ears taste uh, taste is the tongue and touch is the skin so gurudev says that all these five senses there are enemies they keep our attention outwardly and uh, to the material consciousness so as we focus outwardly uh, with these uh, senses Uh, we uh, it prevents us from going internally it prevents us from going within and then advance our meditation concentration so they are our enemies okay so 
uh, what we want to do is make our mind strong to ignore senses. How difficult is it to control our mind to ignore senses? It's very difficult. It is very difficult. And uh, I wanted to give you uh, an example of a monkey to illustrate how difficult it is. Let's say a monkey, uh, there, is, there was a monkey uh, who was very restless. Now, we know monkeys are restless to begin with. And this monkey particularly was very restless. Okay, And then he uh, drank some wine, uh, very freely drank a lot of wine. He got intoxicated and he became even more restless. Okay, And then a scorpion stung the monkey. And with that, it was a lot of restlessness. Monkey was totally out of control, very restless. But guess what? Uh, to top that off, uh, a demon entered monkey's body. Now the monkey was totally, totally out of control. There was uh, total restlessness. There was no way that restlessness could be prevented and calmness can be achieved. And that's the story of our mind. Our mind is like a monkey, becomes, uh, first of all, to start with, it's very restless. And then uh, uh, when monkey becomes uh, drunk with the, with the, or our mind becomes drunk with the wine of desire, that becomes even more restless. Okay, like uh, comes the stinging of a scorpion, of jealousy uh, for other people's success, that brings even more restlessness in our mind. And then the demon of pride and ego enters our mind and that makes us totally out of control, very restless. So we in that kind of a state, how do you control your mind to ignore senses? It's very difficult. So that's where Kriya Yoga helps us a lot with uh, the meditation, with uh, when we are going within, okay, you are not focusing on the five uh, senses, but you're going within and then you uh, perceive subtle sensations in your spine, in your brain, and then uh, you get focused onto the divine sounds, divine vibrations, divine illumination. All of those things are going to keep your mind serene, peaceful, uh, and internally focused. So Kriya Yoga does this beautifully with Pratyahar, uh, withdrawal of the senses. Dharna. Dharna is concentration. And concentration is the first step towards meditation. So, by the way, I also wanted to say on Pratyahar that the beginning of the real Kriya practice starts right here. Withdrawal of the senses. Okay, that's the beginning. When you do that, the advancement is very fast. So dharana, concentration. Concentration is the first step towards meditation. If you cannot concentrate, you cannot meditate. And the concentration uh, is done at a single point. In our case, in Kriya Yoga, we go internally. In some yogas, they go internal or external. But uh, uh, in our case, we go internally and we focus on a point. Uh, on several points uh, throughout the meditation. And with the practice, <clears throat> with the five steps we learned previously, yama, niyama, asana, uh, pranayam, and pratyahar, those are necessary to make advancement and have concentration. Without those steps, it's very difficult to get concentration. And they take you to the next step of meditation. So it is very difficult. And uh, Kriya Yoga with the divine sounds, divine illumination, uh, vibrations, going internally, focusing on the centers. There are many ways the concentration is improved. The seventh st step is Dhyana. So Dhyana, which is meditation. So 
all the previous step we are doing is preparing us to then do meditation. From, from dharna concentration, uh, there is still some thoughts uh, which could uh, uh, disturb you or intervene you. But when it comes to meditation, that there are no thoughts. It's unbroken concentration. So you don't know when you started the, the concentration and then you reached the meditation stage. You uh, go into the meditation stage with unbroken concentration. And at that point, you are going beyond mind. And uh, you get glimpse uh, uh, and conception of God at that point uh, in dhyana. And uh, that's a step to prepare you for the next step, which is Samadhi, the super conscious state. So in uh, Hinduism, uh, it's called Moksha. In Buddhism, uh, they call it uh, Nirvana. In uh, Christian, it could be Heaven. So there are many names, but Samadhi, the super conscious state, is what the ultimate goal of all yogas are, to reach this state. And there is a, basically a, a, a state of complete union with God is what you want to achieve with this and self-realization, God realization. Uh, at this point, your, your consciousness, your personal consciousness merges with the consciousness, consciousness of the universe and you are now God-like, God-realized and at that point, uh, absolute truth is revealed to you. So we are fortunate to have in our lineage, all the masters who have reached this Samadhi state of super consciousness state, and they are guiding us. And uh, we are fortunate to have this kind of a lineage who are helping us in our spiritual journey. I want to make sure we have enough time. I could uh, quickly talk about uh, the, the next one, which is Bhakti Yoga, and then we can stop. So Bhakti Yoga is, uh, is devotion. Bhakti means devotion. So Bhakti, with Bhakti, which is with devotion and with love, you're worshiping your personal God and your God, and the, uh, <clears throat> the goal is again the same. Goal is to reach uh, or have God realization. Uh, but this uh, the path is more uh, suited for devotees with love and devotion, highly developed in them. So Christianity, Islam, Judaism, um, with the worship of God, the Bhakti Yoga uh, would be uh, practiced. So, Bhakti Yogi is totally intoxicated in God and uh, all the Bhakti Yogi thinks of is God and we know that from uh, let's say Gurudev and Guruji uh, example the, the uh, Guruji and Gurudev when they talk they talk about God all the time and all their discourses uh, there's uh, God in the center so God of the universe but also father mother sister friend and child so they consider God as everything father, mother, sister, uh, and uh, besides the Lord of the universe, right? So there is no other desire in bhakti yoga, yogis than to, uh, uh, to be in the communion with God, okay? So one great advantage is easiest and the most natural way to reach the great divine. That's the advantage. However, uh, there is a disadvantage, which could be uh, in its lower form, it could degenerate into hideous fanatism. So my religion, my God, uh, if uh, with that other religion, other God are not uh, as good, but only mine is, uh, that kind of fanatism could come at a lower level of bhakti yoga. When re you reach the higher level, then you are at the higher level. Uh, then uh, it all becomes one. There is no discrimination. There is no, uh, no uh, duality. So, 
there is no my religion and or your religion it's all religion same uh, it's ultimately the god the two stages of bhakti yoga gauni which is the preparatory step and the stage and the second stage is para which is the supreme stage so in gauri uh, in in gauni which is preparatory stage you may have this uh, hideous fanatism but when it comes to the uh, supreme it 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 does it doesn't exist there you are uh, in preparatory you are preparing your your mind to purify your mind and soul by uh, renunciation by mantras by rituals by symbols all of those things are necessary to help you get to the next level which is then supreme para and there the real love of god uh, they are in madly in love with god some people say these guys are mad but they are not mad they are madly in love we are all mad in certain ways uh, with how uh, what we do but these are madly in love with god and no expectations in return there is no uh, expectation here in return uh, they just want to be uh, in the service of god without any expectation so i'm going to conclude and and kriya yoga by the way we have a lot of different uh, uh, different uh, uh, ways we are uh, showing our devotion we are developing love and devotion a uh, kriya yoga the whole practice is not to be practiced mechanically right if we practice it with devotion we practice with we love and love for god love for gurus all of that elevates our practice so uh, the no expectations in return i want to conclude with a story where this king uh, went to a forest and met a sage and this sage was very highly realized and guru was i mean uh, the king was very impressed with the sage and uh, uh, with little talking uh, king was just totally uh, impressed and uh, king said hey sage would you please accept uh, some gifts from me and sage said why do i need gifts i have uh, the food i have the fruits uh, from the forest from the the trees which i eat i have water from the streams i drink and i have this beautiful house a cave uh, where i live so what else do i need so i really don't need your gift but king insisted that please oblige me uh, ultimately king convinced the sage to go to his palace with him and then accept gifts they went to the palace king prepared all the gifts and before giving the gifts to the sage king started praying king said oh god please give me long life oh god please give me more children oh god please give me more power oh god please give me more physical uh, strength uh, and long life all of these things uh, the king prayed before giving the gift the sage started quietly walking away and the king had to run after the sage say hey sage i haven't given you the gifts yet why are you running away and the sage said i don't accept i don't beg of a beggar i cannot accept a gift from a beggar so with that i'm going to conclude today's presentation the other yogas we can talk about some other time and i wanted to thank you all for giving me this opportunity let's now uh, do a meditation okay this is a general meditation uh, not a kriya meditation but uh, let's all close our eyes okay let's close our eyes sit straight your spine is straight to allow the free flow of prana
bring your concentration between the two eyebrows in the soul center in the third eye Keeping the concentration in the soul center, notice your breath. The breath coming in, in the nostrils, breath going out. Breath becomes feeble, slow, and that brings more peace in the mind. Now, bring your concentration back in the soul center. Take a slow, long, and deep inhalation. Hold and bend in the front slowly. Bend as far as you can. Exhale. Normal conscious breathing. The flow of prana, the flow of energy is rushing towards the brain. Notice that. Normal breathing, keep your attention on the breath. Now, take a long inhalation, hold and slowly sit up. Spine is erect. Exhale and your concentration in the soul center.
Deepen your concentration in the soul center. Now, let us practice some breathing. Let's take a deep inhalation. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. 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 Hold. Exhale. Inhale, hold, exhale. Inhale, hold, exhale. Normal, conscious breathing. Your attention is back in the soul center. Let's keep 100% attention in the soul center. Concentrate. Mind is becoming more peaceful, less thoughts, better concentration. Thank you. 
with love for God and Gurus. Please say your internal prayer with love and gratitude. Let us complete today's session with a prayer, Maham Mutrujay Mantra. Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukamiva Bandhanan Mutyor Mukshiya Mamrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanan Rutyor Mukshiya Mamrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanan Rutyor Mukshiya Mamrutat Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you, Pranam. Jai Guru.